disservice. Now, I think maybe Universe is going to wake a lot of them up anyway, and they're going to need the assistance, and so we need to be standing by. But uh, my way of thinking is... Triage. Yeah, exactly, and I've, I've changed my opinion, because I was always out there rabble-rousing, oh, if we can get enough people awake, we can go and create the revolution next week, you know, and we'll be done with this in 30 days, and I can get back to my boat building. But it doesn't, doesn't work that I'm way. I think that's where I'm at, or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly on the peak of that wave or something, but, you know, I, I, I'm bursting at the seams trying to get somebody to listen or, you know, wake up to what's going on. Quit, you know, pull yourself away from the TV. It's hard, though, dude. I mean, you get into a situation where they've got bad diets, it affects their brain, they've got uh, flashy lights at them constantly, uh, the flashy lights impact the brain, they, they work because of the flash and the intensity of the light because we're vibration creatures and so we respond at levels. And the, the sneaky bastards, the Illuminati are out there, these guys are very talented and they're very clever. So if it can be done to hoax you one way, they will work very diligently to get every bit of nuance out of it that they can. So, you know, I cut these people some some slack on that. But one day they'll be walking along and they'll trip over something they can't deny and then they're going to need you. (laughs) Very well said, my friend. Uh, Cliff, it was a pleasure to to take my questions and Chris and Cherie, have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. You two give me a call sometime. I'd like to see how you're doing. All right. Um, I will do that. Stephen, I'll give you a call. Thanks excellent, very much excellent. And let's go to um, Roger in Wisconsin, who's been holding quite some time. Thanks for holding so long, and welcome to the broadcast, Roger. Thank you. Um, Cliff, I've been a follower of, of your work since uh, Alec Merklinger, and um, I, have some, I thought I heard you say something to the effect that uh, metal structures or metal roofs would be beneficial. Is that right? That's in terms of general radiation protection, it's better to have metal between you and it. Um, where Earth is better, a lot of Earth is better than a little bit. Yeah, but the basically metal, and I've even got some suggestion that, you know, uh, solar uh, instances like this can actually be effectively shed with those mylar space blankets. And a friend of mine who has actually been down and done science work in Antarctica has some reason to believe that that might be effective if you knew to put it on. Um, so that being said, uh, is it re- re- protected from electromagnetic, or is it particles from space, or is it is it a UV, or all of the above? And if it's that's not the case, the, it's not protecting you from the magnetic. The, it would be protecting okay. you from the UV kind of radiation. Because you said something about concrete below, and what I happened to happen just to have just done I, unconsciously or on, on a more subtle level was uh, we were just trying to get our place set up, and uh, I bought one of those uh, closet-like buildings with a concrete pad, and I thought, would that be good or not? And That'd the other be thing, really good, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> My wife's going to hear this, and I'm, I think it'd be great. Okay, so um, that said, are we pretty much hosed as far as growing anything under those conditions? We're in the same situation. Uh, we're in a, in a worse situation than they faced in 1789 when the volcanoes caused the, uh, er, um, the loss of all of the uh, grain crops throughout northern Europe. So uh, we're screwed, but we're a lot smarter. We've got lights. As long as we've got electricity, we can grow stuff indoors. But we're going to seriously be impacted on that, and it's going to test the species, I think, as to how much of a cooperative species we are, because it's going to get really nasty. The amount of shortfall in the grains I'm hearing in some of these areas is pretty staggering. And now look what has happened in northern Japan, because you know all of the nuke plant areas, they won't be able to grow rice there, and that was their rice-growing basket there. Yeah, one last thing here. Uh, you had mentioned a long time ago about uh, some fellows who had taken a device and were sort of on the run from the powers that be. What's the story on that now? Do you know anything about it? I'll tell you something. I don't know how valid it is, okay, but it was really spooky. A lot of the um, linguistics at the very high level, the archetypical words that we were using to track those two guys, have shown up here recently with um, the detention of a couple of people attempting to enter Canada from the West Coast. Oh, there were wow. two. There were two people that uh, that have been involved in a um, an officialdom 
incident. They didn't arrest them or anything, but uh, they're not. They're they're being held and so on. There was a device involved. No one will say what the device does, and apparently that was what initially triggered it. Was that the device was seen, and they were casually asked what it did, and they didn't give an explanation that the Canadian authorities liked. And in fact, I guess these guys were trying to sneak into the country anyway. I don't know any of the details and can't share any more of that, but the linguistics were weird because it was a, uh, for the archetypes, it was like a 80% hit in a single little article. And what about Cousin Dimitri? Uh, Alexi. Alexi, uh, yeah. I, I expect that we're still looking about a June or July uh, a visibility for that because it was a one summer separation from another summer. And we think it occurred in the chaoses, uh, chaos of last year. It'll show up in the chaos of this year. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for all you've done. I appreciate it greatly. Um, sure. Yeah, no, no worries. Had to do something. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, in between eating pie, you've got to do some kind of work, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been getting away from pie because I'm getting, losing weight now, I guess. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yeah. Right, bye. Now, you keep saying pie. Do you mean 3.14 or are you talking about cherry pie? I like peach and marionberry a little bit more, but uh, the reason to use it is it, it, a lot of people give me some, um, they get on my case about this, right? But uh, I always say pi is interesting because pi is the only edible irrational number. So you're thinking about both of them. And the pi is, as a food is just a very uh, ubiquitous thing to the human culture so that I know that I can relate to almost any persons on the planet because there's only two cultures or three cultures that I'm aware of that did not invent a food in a crust that we can call a pie. Hmm. What are those three cultures? One of them is the Inuit. I'll let you figure out the other two. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to have to think on that one. But pie, <laughs> pie is also a great movie. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a fantastic deal about numerology, the Bible code, et cetera, et cetera. No, I, I rarely get a chance to watch uh, uh, media, and if I'm going to watch movies, it'll usually be something uh, terribly stupid and uh, comedic. <laughs> you got to you got to take a break. That's exactly Correct. yes, yes. You have to rest your mind and enjoy life because if we're not enjoying life, ladies and gentlemen, then there's no point What's in doing the this. Point? Right? Exactly, exactly. Let me go to a question from the moderator real quick, then we'll get back to the phones. Um, what do you think about the orgone blasters? Uh, conceptually, there's no reason that they can't work in terms of the practicality of building it and so forth, such that it was a uh, repeatable tool. There's a lot of uh, questions about it, but I don't see anything uh, untoward with the approach of the energy. It all makes sense. Okay. Very good. You know, basically, we live in an energetic world that we are tricked by the stupidity of our five senses into thinking is solid matter. And thus, if you took that as a basic premise, then anything that approached dealing with reality from an energetic viewpoint is necessarily working at the core of what is actually real, in spite of our mind thinking that it's matter. It's, an, it's really energetic uh, vibrations that are occurring at rates too fast for us to decode. Therefore, if one wanted to affect an energy state, what better thing to use than energy? You know, that brings a question to mind, actually something you said earlier. What about these police sirens that we see? When you get pulled over, what does that do to the consciousness, and has that been um, calculated to do Sure. That? It was actually in, um, there was a, a couple of books that were written about the um, e effective use of trauma as a civil uh, tool, as a tool of civil government, these, these books were incorporated into, and I forget the name, the German word for it, but was a particular uh, subset of the SS, and they uh, in Germany of the um, uh, uh, time of Hitler. And what they did was they studied these, and we actually now have the sirens that we have as a direct result of the studies that were done on humans with various different sounds. Um, and what occurred to the mind. We're lucky that they didn't have MRIs where it would be even more brutally effective. The kinds of sirens, because you know that prior to World War II, the siren structure in the United States, as is so many other different things, was different from that in Europe. We didn't have what was known as the klaxon. The klaxon falls into a particular kind of sound that was actually banned by the Vatican 
I think I want to say around the 13 or 1400s, during the period of Renaissance, when they were getting into the uh, the lyric period, where they were getting into explore vibration music, etc., they banned a particular discordant frequency. Again, I forget the name of it at the moment, but that discordant frequency was at the core of the klaxon emergency sirens, whereas we used a tonal bell that was at the core of our system, which originated from the um, uh, original uh, uh, motorized fire brigades and using bells as opposed to whistles. Political issue there. But nonetheless, the current klaxon, you're quite right, is used, and the sound that we have on our police cars now comes from the European sound, and it's discordant enough and it's intended to produce a specific type of trauma that gets your brain into a spe- or your consciousness into a specific part of your brain, which is that reptilian core, because they can ah. control you there. Yes, yes. They can't control the superego. Correct. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't like that term, because it's, again, it's a misleading. It comes from um, uh, Freud's Freud, analysis, yeah. which was flawed at so many levels, plus the, the, the bastard was part of the uh, whole uh, Bavarian Illuminati uh, thing, and he was working at, against humanity. Well, the way I see it with the Illuminati, though, and yes, they are working against humanity, but it's not necessarily that they don't have the knowledge, because that's how they have control. So what we need to do is learn the knowledge, expose it, and use it for good. It's the magician's intent, Correct. in my opinion. Correct. Yeah, but, well, actually, there's a my, my approach here is I think of it as the... Uh, um, like an archetypical battle uh, framed in Vedic terms would be the war between the Magi and the sorcerers. So, so bear in mind there's a difference between someone who can do magic and someone who is merely a sorcerer. A sorcerer uh, would be um, like a, uh, a chemist, and a magician would be like an alchemist. And I know everybody, there's a lot of people that have been trained in their mindset by academia to ridicule alchemy. But what they should understand is chemistry comes from alchemy. Alchemy is actually from alchem, an Arabic word meaning the point or the single uh, entity or uh, the irreducible. Uh, what we might think of is like the atomic weight or the atomic valuable. That, is the, that which cannot be reduced any further is what the word means. And it goes, Alchemists were real scientists, but they were more magicians because they were working with things from an energetic viewpoint, whereas the others are attempting to fit everything into the material model of the world, the scientists and the sorcerers. And what we're after, what we're actually seeing here, I think, is a, a um, an expression of duality at a universal level, in which there is a contention between the sorcerers uh, in vast numbers and the few magicians that are left. But this is a turning, and we're going to be turning back into the age of the magicians, and we're going to be leaving the sorcerers behind. And they're really pissed about it, but they do have the knowledge, and they're going to cause us a lot of problems on the way. Well, I, I hope so, because the, the, from what I can tell, the sorcerers these days are the pharmaceutical companies, mixing up all their sure, chemicals Sure, 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 and Monsanto, yeah. all of them. But yes. it goes much beyond that. Um, so, for instance, a sorcerer would attempt to use tools, mechanisms, and devices, as well as um, harmonization with uh, place placing and uh, set and setting to accomplish something, whereas a magician would work on themselves to the point where they eliminated, eliminated themselves as an issue and could express what they wish to occur directly into the vibration. And so, so it's, it, it actually is a meaningful point. It's not just a, a stupid meandering and thinking here. But a sorcerer would say, I wish to, um, let's just choose something really absurd, um, uh, I wish to purify the water over there. And uh, and so they might uh, make sure that the reservoir was put at uh, strategic degrees because they're a sorcerer. They think that 33 is a good number, so they put the reservoir at 33 degrees latitude. Or they put their state capital or their national national capital at sp- specific latitudes, as as in, for instance, Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. And so they say, I want to control the populace through these particular mechanisms. And so what they attempt to do is to use those things. That 